Hey guys, James again with TFB TV. Now, a few weeks ago, our parent publication, thefirearmblog.com, did an article on a video where a gentleman took a backpack full of books, shot an AR-15 at it to see if an AR-15 round, a 223 or a 556 round, would penetrate a stack of books. It was a really interesting video. I'm gonna drop a card up there to link to the original video because if I'm gonna steal the guy's idea, I may as well give him a little bit of credit, right? I saw this video and I thought it was really interesting and I said, hey, why don't I go out, verify the results, do the same thing myself, and throw in some different types of ammunition into the mix, some different carbines, some different calibers, and see if everything holds up. So I'm really excited to do that today. Now, by the way, if you're interested in this type of video, I'm also gonna throw a card up there real quick on a video I did with the shotgun versus the iPhone. Now, this is called backpack versus assault rifle, but ironically, there's not going to be a single assault rifle in this video. Now, if I can expound on that point for just a second, technically speaking, an assault rifle is capable of select fire. That is, it has some sort of fully automatic mode. None of the rifles that I'm shooting today are capable of select fire, so none of them are truly assault rifles. That said, you see the term assault rifle freely used today when people are actually referring to semi-automatic, magazine-fed, carbines are rifles that aren't truly assault rifles. Essentially, when you see the colloquial use of the term assault rifle, it's typically by someone who is not very acquainted with firearms and they're referring to a semi-automatic magazine-fed rifle that has features that appear to be frightening or it's a, a scary looking gun. So that's typically what people mean when they say assault rifle. All right, let's talk about what we're gonna be using in today's video. In my hands, I have the H&K MP5. You guys may recognize this from the greatest Christmas movie of all time, Die Hard. This is a nine millimeter carbine. Even if it were select fire, it wouldn't be an assault rifle. It would be a submachine gun. But we call this a pistol caliber carbine because it shoots nine millimeter, a pistol round. Speaking of that, we're going to be using M882, which is the NATO load of nine millimeter. It's a NATO ball round. It's a little bit hotter than your average nine millimeter round. It's what the military uses. We're also gonna be using the well-known AK-47. The AK-47, of course, 762 by 39, which is going to be slightly more powerful than the 556 by 45 used in the AR-15, at least at close ranges. We're gonna be using Russian steel cased ammunition that uses a steel bullet. You're going to get a lot more penetration out of these steel bullets in the Russian rounds than you would get through your traditional lead bullet with a copper casing. Finally, we're gonna be using an AR-15. It's going to be in a 16 inch configuration, very similar to what's carried by our armed forces, similar to the M4 carbine, two different types of ammo for it, the more conventional M193 ammunition, which is used by our military, but we're also going to use M855, which has a steel penetrator core. So you're going to expect a lot more penetration out of the M855 ammunition with the AR-15. So I got some of my old law school books and I got a backpack, of course, of course. I go to the thrift store to buy a backpack and the best one is pink. You guys knew it wouldn't be a James Reeves TFB video if you didn't have a pink backpack. Of course, it's gotta be pink. So anyways, we're gonna be loading this up with books. We're gonna take a shot from each gun. Let's see what happens. Starting with one round of nine millimeter M882 ball out of an HK MP5. All right, let's go take a look. Round entered right here at the bottom. Went through all the paper. Oop. Pretty weak. So, stack of magazines. Really didn't even go through an entire stack of magazines. So for what it's worth, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, thin magazines and catalogs will stop a nine millimeter bullet out of an MP5 pretty easily. 
It didn't even go through. It made a it tore the front page of poor Emmanuel's contracts outline. All right, let's try the AK. Now shooting an AK-47 and 7.62-39 with Wolf Steel ammunition at, again, about 50 feet. All right, let's go check it. Entrance right there, just a little bit higher than where the MP5 ones. Ooh, it's magazines all jumbled up. Enter and exit through the magazines. Enter, exit. The manual's contracts outline. Enter, exit. Redwell, full of papers. Enter, exit. My MBE bar review outline, enter. And you can see it's starting to tumble. And finally it gets stopped by my old crim law book. There's the bullet, it got snagged in there. No damage uh, to the other side of the backpack. So a steel AK-47 round gets stopped. Now I've got an AR-15, 16-inch barrel in 223. There it is right there. This is M193, which is military-grade ammo, I guess, for lack of a better term. As you can see here, a very, very tiny entrance hole. A lot of people don't realize this, but diameter-wise, an AR-15 round is hardly bigger than a 22, like the 22 you went and shot with your dad when you were a kid. Looks like it went clean through the magazines. See it went through my outline. There it is going into and out of my file folder. Looks like it started tumbling going through this outline. Into my crim law book, but not out the other side. See if we can find it. Here's part of it. And here's some more of it. There we go. Some more. It functionally disintegrated. I mean, you can just see just little chunks of the jacket are all I'm finding in there. All right, now let's try the last one. By the way, the 223 didn't go near as far as the 76239 from the AK round. Finally, I've got the military M855 with the steel penetrator core. Okay, guys, I'm gonna have to reserve my right to do a reshoot because I put these two rounds basically on top of each other. Didn't even think about it. Uh, but let's see, just for the heck of it. We have another M855 round if we need it. Of course, we know that it went through the magazines. We know that it went through the outline. We know it went through the files. Look, there they are, right next to each other. We know it went through this outline. And again, they're close to each other and it looks like it may have done a little tumbling. Unbelievable. Didn't make it through the book. Wow, it's still hot. There's the jacket right there. We turned down the exposure a little bit. So you can see the jacket right there. There's the steel penetrator core. What did we learn from our accidental but entertaining metaphor? Bullets can't beat the law, right? Now that was kind of amusing to see that a backpack not even completely full of paper and textbooks would defeat 9mm, 5.56, 7.62 by 39. It was really interesting to see these results. In fact, 9mm, it looks like out of an MP5, might not even get past 
the Sunday paper. I actually expected the AR-15 to have a lot more penetration than it did. It's got a very small, very fast round, upwards of 3,000 feet per second. Compare that to the AK-47 round, which is about a little over two times heavier, but it moves at just a little over 2,000 feet per second. I think maybe what happened, as you saw, the AK-47 outperformed the AR-15 in terms of penetration, and I think that was just because the AK-47 round managed to maintain the most structural integrity, but I'm not a ballistics guy. Maybe Andrew, our resident ballistics expert, will get down in the comments and tell us what he saw happen. But to give you the bottom line, it appears that a backpack not even completely full of textbooks, paper, so on, is actually more effective than most, if not all, forms of soft body armor or bulletproof vests or what have you. So I was really surprised whenever I saw that, when I saw the first video that was published on the firearm blog, and I had to see the results for myself and then show them to you guys. So I hope you guys found that interesting. I wanna say thank you as usual to Ventura Munitions for sending me the ammo that we used in this test. Thank you to you guys so much for watching, subscribers, Patreon supporters. I really appreciate you and I will see you next week.